Hey guys and girls, hope you all having a great week. So this video is the latest installment in my story so far series and will focus on the main events, world and characters in Deus Ex Human Revolution. Human Revolution is actually the third game in the Deus Ex franchise, set 25 years before the events of the first game and 45 years before the events of the second. And for those of you that might not know, it acts as a prequel to the events of Mankind Divided, set for release on the 23rd of August. So for those of you wanting to play the newest game from Eidos Montreal, this video is designed to get you ready. Now before I delve into the events of the main story, let's begin by explaining a bit about the world of Deus Ex and the main groups that you need to know. Deus Ex Human Revolution is set in the year 2027, in a world where multinational corporations have grown in power beyond the control of national governments. Humanity is experiencing an age of unprecedented evolution, as the line between man and machine becomes increasingly blurred. Mechanical augmentations have become more popular and widespread, giving human beings superhuman abilities, from enhanced strength to speed, intellect or charisma. Deus Ex Human Revolution deals with the ethics of transhumanism and raises the question of whether humanity's reach has exceeded its grasp. Despite the apparent benefits that augmentations could bring, there is a widespread belief that such technology and power could be abused. Consequently, a social rift has emerged between augmented and non-augmented humans. While Human Revolution starts to touch upon this divide, we do know that it will be explored in a lot more detail in Mankind Divided and provide the backdrop for much of the game. In Human Revolution, this social divide has led to the formation of two main political factions. On the one side, you have the pro-augmentation camp led by David Sarif, the CEO and founder of Sarif Industries, a biotechnology company based in North America. Sarif believes that augmentations are the next step in human evolution. While he is undeniably a shrewd businessman, at heart he is an idealist, believing in the good that augmentations can bring, particularly in their ability to remove any weaknesses and terminal diseases that the human race currently suffer from. It is clear that Sarif wants to use augmentations for the good of humanity, but those mistrustful of his motives accuse Sarif of using the technology to develop super soldiers and make a fortune by selling contracts to military organisations. Such accusations often come from the anti-augmentation camp. Prominent persons advocating against the use of augmentations in humans include William Taggart, the head of the Humanity Front, and Ezekiel Sanders, the head of Purity First, a right-wing extremist group. While these two individuals have personal reasons for denouncing augmentations, many people felt that augmentations would usurp the social order, as the mechanical augmented can accomplish more than regular people, eliminating the need for natural skill or talent. Though Humanity Front is supposed to be a political organisation, it does contain more radical elements, including violent protests and sometimes acts of terrorism. The third and final group that you need to know, as I'm sure they will play a much larger role in Mankind Divided is the Illuminati. A secret society whose members are extremely wealthy and influential individuals, including important scientists, captains of industry and political leaders. Their goal is to maintain control and influence the direction that mankind takes in the future. Believing that total freedom breeds total chaos, they see mechanical augmentation as a dangerous path for humanity. The Illuminati does not want society to progress too rapidly and escape from the confines and boundaries that they have created. Created. While I won't go into too much detail here, they follow what is known as the Icarus Effect. This is a phenomenon by which members of society with abilities far exceeding the average person are naturally cut down so as not to threaten the rest of the species. In order to enforce this, they use a team of cybernetically enhanced tyrants to carry out select assassinations and kidnappings, particularly of those individuals associated with the augmentation debate. More will be revealed about the Illuminati as I talk about the story. So let's begin. During Deus Ex Human Revolution, we play as Adam Jensen, an ex-SWAT team commander. He left the force after an incident known as the Mexican Town Massacre, in which a young augmented boy was identified as dangerous, and Jensen was given the order to shoot to kill. He refused that order, which was carried out by another member of Jensen's team. Sadly, the whole incident left Jensen shaken and resulted in his decision to quit the force. 
At the beginning of the game, we see Jensen talking to his ex-girlfriend Megan Reed, a lead scientist at the biotechnology corporation Sarif Industries. Hired as chief of security by David Sarif, the CEO of the company, Jensen is busy organizing security preparations for the company's upcoming trip to the National Science Board's planned hearing in Washington DC to discuss the need for augmentation technology regulation. We learn that Megan will announce a revolutionary breakthrough that will allow people to augment themselves freely without having to resort to the anti-rejection drug neuropazine. This will make augmentation easier and more affordable, as currently only the wealthy can afford neuropazine, and without it, augmentation can prove extremely painful and potentially life-threatening. When talking about the breakthrough, it is clear that Megan is extremely nervous and uncomfortable when discussing the source of said discovery, and she deflects all of Adam's questions as she gives him a tour of the facility. During a meeting between Adam and David Sarif to go over security plans, the company is suddenly attacked by a group of heavily armed soldiers led by three heavily augmented mercenaries. Jensen fights his way through them, determined to rescue his ex-girlfriend. However, as he tries to rescue her, he is caught by the mercenary leader Jaron Namir, brutally beaten, shot in the head and left for dead. The attackers set fire to the facility, burning most of the victims to make them unrecognisable and destroying the new breakthrough research in the process. Jensen's wounds are fatal. However, determined not to lose his chief of security and an asset to the company, Sarif, using a clause in his employment contract, has Jensen's body heavily augmented, more than is actually necessary to save his life, making Jensen the first human to have such extensive cybernetic modifications and survive without the need for neuropazine. The reasons for this will be revealed much later on in the story. After a time skip of about six months, we see a fully augmented Adam Jensen return to work and face many of his co-workers, who are still reeling from the attack, including a sarcastic, wisecracking and cynical but brilliant hacker called Frank Pritchard and a kind-hearted ace pilot called Malik. Both of these characters will be by Adam's side throughout much of the game. It's at this point that the RPG elements in the game become apparent, as Jensen can react to the questions asked him about his augmentations and decide on how he feels about them, from curious about his new abilities to horrified at the changes that have been made without his consent. Boarding a jet, Jensen is met by Sarif, who briefs him on a mission, and explains that he was called back to action to intervene in a hostage crisis in Sarif's Milwaukee Junction manufacturing plant, which has been taken hostage by the radical anti-augmentation terrorist group Purity First. Cyrus suspects the terrorist might actually be after the Typhoon explosive system, an experimental military augmentation that had just been scheduled for production at the plant. Cyrus' suspicions are confirmed when Adam encounters an augmented hacker in a Purity First uniform trying to steal the Typhoon. A very strange occurrence as Purity First are a pro-human, anti-augmentation terrorist group. Upon being found, the hacker shoots himself in the head while pleading for help, as if doing this against his will. After recovering the Typhoon technology, Jensen sneaks his way through the factory, taking out guards along the way, and confronts the Purity First leader, Seek Sanders, who is holding the factory manager Josie Thorpe at gunpoint. Using his Cassidy module augmentation, which allows him to see personality information of those he converses with, Jensen confronts Sanders about the augmented hacker, who he denies any knowledge of. Jensen surmises and convinces Sanders that he has been played, and that Purity First is being manipulated by a third party. Realising that Jensen is not the enemy, he lets Josie go. At this point, you have a choice, let Sanders go or take him down. I ultimately decided to let him go. After the hostage crisis is resolved, Jensen returns to Sarif HQ, where Sarif tells him that the official police reports have been doctored and don't mention any augmentation on the hacker, indicating a cover-up. Sarif sends Adam to the Detroit Police Department morgue to investigate the corpse himself and retrieve the hacker's neural hub. 
Evidence scattered in the police department reveals that both the Milwaukee incident and the Sarif Industries attack had crucial pieces of evidence covered up by the government official Joseph Mandeley, who it turns out is a member of the Illuminati. After recovering the neural hub, Pritchard analyzes it and discovers that the hacker was a literal human proxy and was actually being controlled remotely by someone else. Pritchard traces the source of the control signal to an abandoned factory complex, which Adam goes to to investigate. While there, he spots the augmented mercenaries involved in the Syrup attack. Sneaking into the factory, taking out guards along the way, he sneaks into an elevator and descends into the facility, where he finds a massive underground secret internment camp run by FEMA, aka the military. Deep inside the facility, Jensen comes across the three heavily augmented mercenaries, including Yelena Fedorova, Lawrence Barrett and Jaron Namir, the man who nearly killed him. As Namir and Fedorova flee in an elevator, they leave Barrett behind to take out Adam. Barrett, wielding a huge heavy machine gun augmented hand, charges down Adam, who having to resort to sneaky tactics, including gas canisters and exploding barrels, is able to defeat him. After defeating Barrett, Adam demands to know why FEMA is going after Sarif, to which Barrett cryptically replies, you've got worse enemies than FEMA. Barrett gives Adam an address in Hengsha Island in China before trying to kill himself and Adam by setting off his frag grenades, which Adam manages to escape from. Adam travels to Hengsha only to find the building mentioned by Barrett under lockdown by Bell Tower Associates, a PMC, and the de facto police in Hengsha. Adam infiltrates the building and discovers that this was the residence of the hacker controlling the proxy, Ari von Bruggen, aka Windmill. By investigating the apartment, Adam learns that Windmill has gone into hiding with the help of another client, triad crime boss Tong Zi Hung. After investigating Tong's nightclub, The Hive, Adam learns the location of the hacker. Adam confronts Windmill, who claims he was hired by Zhao Yong Ru, CEO of Taiyong Medical Institute, one of the leading augmentation companies in the world and Cyrus' main competitor. Zhao has ordered Bell Tower to hunt down Windmill after the Milwaukee incident, hence him going into hiding. However, Windmill has left a compromising recording of Zhao inside the Taiyong Medical Headquarters as an insurance policy and enlists Adam to retrieve it. Adam infiltrates the Taiyong Medical Headquarters and watches the recording. In it, Zhao reveals that the scientist's implants were disabled, meaning they, along with Megan, are still alive. She also reveals that Eliza Kassan, the celebrity news anchor of leading media conglomerate Pickers TV, is also involved. Adam makes his way to the building's penthouse to confront Zhao, but tricks Jensen using her feminine wiles and flees into a panic room, setting off the alarm and forcing Adam to escape. Adam makes his way to Pickers TV headquarters in Montreal to confront Eliza. He finds an empty building and speaks to what appears to be Eliza, but turns out to be a sophisticated hologram. Soldiers storm the building, forcing Adam to hide and sneakily make his way to the source of the hologram signal in a secret sub-basement. There, he discovers that Eliza is actually an advanced artificial intelligence, designed to manipulate public perception through the media. She is effectively being used by the Illuminati to spread their propaganda and control media coverage and bias of the augmentation debate, but has also gained some degree of self-awareness and is willing to help Adam. Before she can reveal the true masterminds behind the Sire of HQ plot and the location of the missing scientist, however, their meeting is interrupted by another of the augmented mercenaries, Yelena Fedorova. This boss fight was much more challenging, and after using a combination of EMP grenades and the heavy machine gun, Adam finally defeats Fedorova, and Eliza informs Adam that the scientist's implants were removed by Dr. Isaias Sandoval, the aide of William Taggart, leader of the peaceful anti-augmentation organization Humanity Front, giving our main protagonist a much needed lead to follow. Adam returns to Detroit, where Taggart is scheduled to give a speech, only to find the city in chaos as anti-augmentation protesters storm Sarif Industry headquarters, accusing the company of developing super soldiers and calling for a ban on augmentations. Sarif meeting Jensen at his apartment informs him that everything that has happened so far is consistent with the actions of the Illuminati, who have been pulling the strings in the background this whole time. 
After confronting Taggart at the conference, Adam manages to manipulate Taggart and learns that he wasn't aware of Sandoval's actions and reveals that Sandoval is also Sikh Sander's brother. Taggart directs Adam to Sandoval's apartment, where he finds a secret bunker filled with Purity First members, proving his allegiance to the terrorist group. Adam confronts Sandoval, who reveals that he couldn't remove the tracking implants and thus simply change their frequency to one where receivers wouldn't know where to look. Sandoval then attempts to commit suicide, though Adam is able to talk him down. Pritchard manages to track one of the implants belonging to Cyrus scientist Vasily Sevchenko to Hengsha. Nearing his arrival to the island, however, Adam's aircraft is shot down by Bell Tower, leading to a massive ambush, sadly resulting in the death of the craft's pilot, Faridar Malik. Adam discovers that Bell Tower is on a manhunt for him, and that augmentation users all over the world are being advised to have their biochips replaced due to a defect. After having his augmentations glitching on him on several occasions, Adam decides it's best to get this biochip implanted. Jensen then tracks a signal to the hideout of the Harvesters, a gang known for kidnapping augmented people and extracting their augmentations. Adam finds Tong Zi Hung wearing Sevchenko's arm, who states that Sevchenko's corpse was sold to the gang by Bell Tower. Not having any love for Bell Tower himself, Tong directs Adam to one of Bell Tower's ships and gives him a bomb to plant as a distraction. When Adam detonates the bomb, barely escaping it and surviving it himself, he notices that the distraction also allowed Tong Sun to escape Hengsha. Adam then stows away in a high-tech hibernation pod and goes off the grid. When Adam wakes up, he finds that he is in the Omega Ranch, a biotech research complex in Singapore. Adam infiltrates the facility and contacts three of Cyrus scientists in order to stage a distraction, allowing him to access a secure part of the complex where Megan is held. Adam also uploads a virus designed by Sevchenko to disable the facility's security to allow the scientists to escape. Once Adam makes his way to the secure sector, he encounters Zhao again. He confronts her with knowledge gained from the scientists that the Illuminati are creating a kill switch for all augmented people worldwide, so they won't challenge their rule. Zhao acknowledges this and uses a remote control to disable Adam's augmentations. It turns out that the biochip installed is actually a trap, allowing her to control and disable all augmented people containing said chip. Now left vulnerable, with all his enhancements disabled, Zhao dispatches Namir to kill Adam. After a difficult fight, finally defeating Namir, Adam finds Megan. Accusing her of lying to him and working with the Illuminati, she defends herself profusely, arguing that the kidnapping was genuine. She reveals that the facility is owned by Hugh Darrow, the billionaire Nobel Prize winner, father of augmentation technology. Darrow is currently involved with Panchea, a massive geoengineering facility in the Arctic Ocean designed to stop global warming via iron seeding. She also reveals that the basis of her revolutionary discovery is actually Adam's DNA, which she has gathered without his consent. To explain this to you, at a very young age, Adam Jensen was one of a group of infants subjected to experimental genetic therapy treatments by White Helix Labs, a subsidiary of Versalife, the manufacturer of neuropazine. All of the children, aside from Jensen, died as a result of the treatments. These experiments left Adam with a unique genetic code that allowed him to become fully augmented without the need for neuropazine, and thus, Jensen unknowingly carried the secret of universal augmentation in his DNA, making him extremely valuable. David Sarif, having run a secret background check on Adam, was aware of this, and this is one of the reasons he hired Adam as chief of security, and why he spent so much money on Adam to ensure that he didn't die at the beginning of the game. Okay, so let's get back to the story. At that moment, while giving a press conference from Panchea, Darrow activates a signal that causes everyone who got the biochip upgrade to become violently insane. Thankfully, Megan uses a device to isolate Adam from the signal, protecting him. After helping the scientists to escape, Adam climbs into a Leo shuttle and travels to Panchea, determined to confront Darrow and stop the broadcast signal sending augmented people crazy. 
infiltrating the base and confronting Darrow, the father of augmentation, explains that he invented the technology to help the less fortunate, but is disgusted that it has since become just another means for the powerful co to control said less fortunate, especially given the Illuminati's plans to use it as a kill switch for mankind, as well as potentially causing humanity to lose its moral centre. Darrow explains that he used the insanity-inducing signal as an attempt to get the technology permanently banned. Adam manages to convince Darrow of the error of his ways, who gives him the broadcast codes and the ability to shut the signal down. As Jensen makes his way to the core of the facility to shut down the signal, on the way he encounters Sarif and Taggart, who had both been invited to the conference, who each propose a course of action for Adam. At the core of the facility, Adam once again encounters Zhao, who merges with the Hyron Project, a huge bioelectronic quantum supercomputer. After destroying the project and killing Zhao, Adam makes his way to the broadcast center, where he is contacted by Eliza. Eliza explains to him the various options he can take. He can broadcast Darrow's confession about augmentation and the Illuminati, thus ensuring that augmentation is permanently banned. He can blame the Humanity Front for the attack, thus ensuring that augmentation is developed further, which was Cyrus' proposal. He can blame the event on tainted augmentation anti-rejection drugs, thus ensuring tight regulation on augmentations, a proposal put forward by Taggart. Or he can set the entire facility to self-destruct, killing everyone present and letting humanity decide for itself. I ultimately decided to reveal the truth about the Illuminati, who I saw as the bigger threat, trusting that the human race would realize that they were being manipulated. However, from what we know from interviews with the developers of Mankind Divided, there is no canon choice here, and instead, the decision that Jensen makes will be merged into all three choices, as the events of Panchea become lost in legend. The state of the world at the outside of Mankind Divided is a world where the divisions between augmented and non-augmented people have worsened. Big companies like Sarif Industries have gone bust, as a result of the backlash received against augmentation technology, and augmented people find themselves segregated and persecuted in a kind of mechanical apartheid, leading to the formation of pro-augmentation terrorist groups. The world seems in a pretty messed up state, which I am definitely looking forward to exploring in more detail. So there you have it, that is the full story of Deus Ex Human Revolution. I tried to keep it as short and concise as possible, though it was difficult with all of the twists in the story and the political intrigue. I will also be uploading a full cinematic story video following this one for those of you that would like to watch the story for yourselves. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, hope you guys found this video helpful. As always, I would appreciate any support that you can give, whether in the form of a comment, a like or a subscribe. All that's left to say guys is thanks for your continued support, take care everyone, and as always, happy gaming! Yeah.